Hello, my name's Brian Richardson, and I am the eighth grade science teacher this year. If you have an eighth grade student who is attending our hybrid options, they will be having or do currently have me as their science teacher. A little bit about myself, I graduated from the University of Missouri with a bachelor's in science education and a unified biology emphasis area. This is my 12th year teaching middle school science. I taught six years of sixth grade science, five years of seventh grade science, and then this is my first year teaching eighth grade science. Many of you may remember me from having me as your seventh grade science teacher last year. Due to our schedule, your students will have science either first quarter or second quarter. If your students currently have me, they should be enrolled in my class for about another three weeks before October 23rd hits and we switch from quarter one to quarter two. If your students are currently in social studies, they will be enrolled in one of my science classes second quarter that should begin on October 26th, I believe is that Monday. Because we are on a quarter system only for social studies and science, we are put at a very, very fast pace. We have roughly half the number of minutes to try to cover the same amount of material which means that we have to go at a very, very fast pace to come anywhere close to covering the material that we normally would in a regular semester. Unfortunately, this means that your student's going to have some homework in science quite regularly. So let's take a look at some of the resources that are available to you and to your student to help them maintain and stay on top of the workload that they have in science this year. One excellent resource is my website, and that's available both to students and to parents. On my website, you can find things like my daily slides, homework slides, and monthly calendar. These items are live documents. That means when I make a change to them, that change goes up on my website without me having to repost or republish things online. You may have to refresh the web page for them to load. Slide number two is always the most recent day's item, but if you are absent, you can always scroll back to the days previously. On each day, you can find important announcements. You can find our learning goal, what students should know or understand each day, as well as a warm up that students should complete first thing. There's also an agenda of everything that we're gonna cover and go over each day and the items that they will need to go to do. The homework assignments is very similar. Each day is set up the same. Slide number two is the most recent day. Slide number three would be two days ago, so on and so on. This will list any items that they need to be working on outside of class. It'll also let them know if there's anything important that they need for the next day's class. You'll also find a monthly calendar. And this monthly calendar, it's important to note that I don't always follow it exactly as it's written. I plan things out as far as I can in advance, but in our quickly changing COVID situation, some things may need to be adjusted and may, be, may not be updated on the calendar. But the calendar does give you a good idea of the types of things we're going to be covering each day in class, as well as when to expect important things like tests and quizzes. There is a group of daily slides, homework assignments, and monthly calendar for the A group of students, which are attending class in person on Mondays and Tuesdays, and learning at home on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There's one set for A group students, and there's a second set for our B group of students who are learning at home on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, and are in-person learning on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Besides those resources, you can also find my email address and the phone number that should ring in my classroom. Uh, I really, really hope that you guys reach out to me through email because my email is always open while I'm at school and I reply to things within 24 hours. My voicemail at my desk, if I'm not sitting here and hear the phone ringing, 
a little red light flashes and sometimes I go days without realizing that my phone is flashing at me. So please send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Besides these resources that are up on my website that both parents and students have access to, we also use Google Classroom to hand out resources and to post materials for students. Your student is either a part of one of my Google Classrooms currently, or we will get that set up for students here at the changeover to quarter number two. There are two different types of learning that students use Google Classroom for. We post things there during in-person days as well as at-home days. When your student is on an in-person day, I post an announcement each morning long before students should be accessing Google Classroom so I know that it's there first thing whenever they log on. So on that announcement, it has the day's date. It also reminds you to go and look at those daily slides and homework slides. And then it asks you to work through the activities and if you're absent, it posts anything specific that you need to do. For instance, emailing me about when to make up a lab. Any resources that are used that day will also be posted underneath that day's announcement. All of these items are posted in the stream and kind of just create a long rundown of everything that's been posted this year. If students are unsure how to find things, they can also access through them through the classwork tab, and that will take them to each unit that we are studying, and then those can be opened and expanded so you can see all of the things that were posted within each unit. On those in-person days, we're working together, and the expectation is that we are meeting face-to-face. -face. When the school building is open and we are able to meet in person, one-on-one, -on -one, or in our small groups in our classroom. Those daily slides, those materials will be posted and shown up on the board in class. On those days when students are learning from at home, those materials are posted to Google Classroom at 8 a.m. They'll be able to access all of those resources and materials and complete them at their own pace. On days when students are learning at home, they do not have any direct contact and interaction with me other than possibly sending me an email to clarify something. But I can't always get to those emails until I get to my prep time, which is usually the middle of the day. But on their at-home days, they'll have a posting with directions to take a look at the daily slide, and then it reminds them that the very first thing they should do each day is complete the Google form with their warm-up, and that's what's used as their attendance for their at-home days. They must complete the warm-up to be counted present. Some days on their at-home learning, there will be assignments that they get turned in. Some days there will not be. Some days those assignments aren't due until midnight and students don't have to have them completed and finished by 3.20 at the end of the day. So for attendance, I check the Google form for their warm-ups. I can sort through that Google form alphabetically and by class period and record attendance for all 50 of my at-home students in a matter of about five minutes. If a student does not fill out their warm-up, then I have to go through extra steps and processes to look through any assignments to see if they've opened documents, if they've started working in them, if they've completed watching videos or taking a quiz. And I can go and try to find some of that information. But if I have to do that for every single student, there's no way that I can report attendance in a timely and easy manner. Every Friday, I host a tutor time or office hours from 1040 to 1125. Students can access that through a Zoom link that is posted up in Google Classroom every Friday. So if you need extra help, if you have clarifying questions, or you just want to stop in and say hello, you can use that Zoom link to go ahead and access tutor time and to hear more about science. Some useful features within Google Classroom include those Google Meet links. If for some reason we have an in-person day and we are unable to actually meet together in the building, that's because we're on quarantine or the building's been shut down, 
or some other reason where we are not able to be in the building, the expectation on those in-person days is that students log on and join our Google Meet. That is how I'll take attendance for those in-person days where we cannot be in the classroom. This Google Meet link will be visible to students to where they can see it and click on it and join us at the correct time. And that information will be in the Google announcement, what time they need to show up for the Google Meet. Any upcoming assignments will be listed here. It'll have a link to anything that they still need to complete and turn in, and it'll take them to their document. This year in eighth grade science, we are currently working through four units of study this first quarter. We spent some time in the very beginning reviewing the scientific method and building upon concepts of data analysis and a four-part conclusion. The overall goal is that students at, at the end of eighth grade can complete and design and carry out an experiment from start to finish completely on their own. Our second unit deals with the law of conservation of mass. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, but does change forms. We are just about finished of that here in our first quarter group. And we're getting started on our third unit related to ecosystems, resources, and human influence. We're gonna take a look at what types of resources are available within an ecosystem, uh, how humans use those resources, and then the effects that our use of those resources have on the overall ecosystem. And then the last couple of days, we'll spend a little bit of time reviewing variation and diversity, a check back in on that genetics unit from last year in seventh grade. Second semester, your students will either have me quarter three or quarter four for science, and we'll be covering about another four units of study there as well, including things like earth and space systems, uh, energy forms, uh, uh, waves, and uh, energy related to waves and, and periods and things like that. So that's what we're covering in eighth grade science at our extremely fast, twice the material and half the time schedule. If you have any questions or need anything from me at all, please feel free to shoot me an email and let me know how I can help. My email is brricha at jeffcoschools.us. Thanks for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful day.